there are some very interesting consequences to the what we saw yesterday to the formation of energy bands in crystals. In particular, we will discuss a particularly interesting feature of this propagation of electron waves in the crystal lattice. There is a break in the E versus K curve at the zone boundary corresponding to K equal to plus minus pi by A. These give you a discontinuity in E which corresponds to a forbidden energy gap. The existence of these forbidden zones may be interpreted as being due to Bragg reflection of the electron waves in by the crystallographic planes. Now, what happens is these values of k at which these discontinuities occur may be shown to coincide with the condition for Bragg reflection or Bragg diffraction. In order to understand this, let us consider an electron wave moving in the x direction as shown in figure. These electron waves are incident normally incident on a set of crystal planes and according to the Bragg's law diffraction occurs the Bragg condition is well known corresponds to 2 d sin theta equal to n lambda n where n is an integer. The electron waves are incident normally therefore, this is the condition for diffraction same as that for x rays here d is the interplanar spacing theta is the angle between the incident and the diffracted wave, lambda is the wavelength of the electron wave, n is the order of diffraction, interplanar spacing is d. For normal incidence theta is 90, and d equal to a the spacing between crystal planes. Therefore, this condition becomes 2 a equals n lambda or k which is 2 pi by lambda is 2 pi by 2 a into n or n into pi by a. So, this is the same as this here really this is n pi by a and we are talking about the reduced zone in which n is 1. So, the two conditions are identical therefore, the condition for Bragg reflection of the electron waves by the crystal planes is identical to the condition corresponding to the discontinuity is at the zone boundary which corresponds to the forbidden gaps. So, this is a very interesting concept that electron waves behave in exactly the same way as x rays, but are reflected at the zone boundary. Therefore, it also follows that the motion of the electron inside a solid where there is a periodic potential 
due to the ion cores in the crystal lattice, the motion of the electron is restricted and this restriction can be understood by looking at the E versus Q curve which is shown in figure the bottom most curve. Here in order to understand the motion of the electrons, we consider the group velocity of the electron waves. This is V g is d omega by d k. This is the standard definition of the group velocity and since we know E is h cross omega, we can also write this as. So, you can see there is a close connection between the group velocity and the slope of the E versus k curve at any point in the zone boundary. In particular, at the zone boundary, the group velocity since the E versus k curve becomes the slope is 0. So, this is 0 at zone boundary where Bragg reflection occurs. Actually, we can see So, these are the zone boundaries. So, you can see that the velocity, the group velocity is a maximum at a point of inflection. In the E versus K curve. that corresponds to this point. So, the slope is negative above this and actually it starts from 0 here at the center of the zone and then increases is positive and increases and reaches a maximum value at this point of inflection and then starts decreasing the slope is negative till the slope becomes actually 0. So, this phenomenon of the curvature of the E versus K curve can be understood by introducing the concept of what is known as effective mass, usually denoted as m star. So, we will assign an effective mass to the electron, which reflects the influence of the periodic potential on the motion of the electron. In order to understand the concept of an effective mass, let us consider an external field, electric field, so we have the energy increment in an applied electric field is E E d x. This is the field and this is the energy. So, the external field acts on the electron and causes a displacement d x in d t in an interval of time d t and the velocity is just d x by d t. So, using this we can write d e as e e v d t. 
and since we have d e and we also want to write d e as starting with this the velocity is given by this. So, we can write substitute here the particle velocity of the electron is the same as the group velocity of the electron waves. So, we can borrow this expression and write 1 by h cross d e by d k into d t. Now, d e can be written as d e by d k into d k by d t. Therefore, I can write d k by d t by going from this. So, I have d e by d k which can be written therefore, I get E e is the electric field by h cross. So, since I have d k by d t, what is d k by d t? d k by d t is nothing but the acceleration because k is related to the momentum. So, a is d v by d t which can be written as 1 by h cross d square e by d k square. times E e. So, you can see that the acceleration of the electron is related to the curvature the second derivative of the energy with respect to k and usually the acceleration is E e by m which we will denote as m star because of the for need to identify this as the effective mass. So, I have the expression finally, for the effective mass So, we see that the m star the effective mass is inversely proportional to the second derivative of the E versus k curve. So, the effective mass is also shown in the figure which also depicts along with the E versus k curve the variation of the group velocity as well as that of the effective mass m star. So, the concept of effective mass is therefore, closely related to the second derivative of the E versus k curve. So, the effective mass is positive for k values which lie from 0 and the maximum value on either side minus k naught and plus k naught where k naught corresponds to the wave vector corresponding to the point of inflection where the group velocity is a maximum. Beyond k naught m star becomes negative on either side. So, the lower portion the lower half of the energy band you have positive m star values and the upper half has negative m star values till it reaches the zone boundary we reach the zone boundary where m star is actually 0. So, you have the important concept of effective mass which flows from the concept of the fact that E versus k curve has breaks discontinuities at the zone boundary. So, you have and so on. So, this is the gap
unlike the free electron approximation which predicts a simple parabolic variation without any break. This is free electron approximation. This is the periodic potential electron in a periodic potential. inside the solid. So, this periodic potential creates a discontinuity in the E versus K curve at the zone boundary and correspondingly there are very many there are interesting deviations from this continuous parabolic variation and these interesting deviations are associated with the fact that the effective mass of the electron under the influence of the periodic potential is such that it goes from 0 to a maximum value in the lower half of the energy band and then from the maximum value it becomes it goes to 0 corresponding to a negative group velocity. And then it even gets there is Bragg reflection and therefore, the electron actually gets reflected at the zone boundary this is the zone boundary. So, these are some very important and interesting consequences of the formation of energy bands and crystals, which we will use now when we start discussing semiconductors. We already discussed how materials can be classified as metals, insulators and semiconductors based on the nature of the band. For example, in a metal the highest occupied band is here and then this has a partially occupied or half occupied this is there is a gap So, partially occupied conduction band and this is completely occupied valence band. So, because of this partial occupation, this is the picture for a metal. Whereas, in the case of an insulator, it is different. So, you have a completely occupied valence band, and a forbidden gap in the energy values, and then a completely empty conduction band with a large energy gap. Because this energy gap is very large the carriers which are completely occupied states inside the valence band are unable to cross or overcome this barrier and get into the conduction band. Therefore, conduction is not possible and this is the behavior of an insulator. And then we talked about a semiconductor in which this picture is the same, but the energy gap is much smaller and because the energy gap is smaller thermal activation excitation of carriers from the valence band into the conduction band is possible. And when the valence band an electron leaves the valence band, then it leaves behind what is known as a hole. This is another important concept, but which comes from the 
energy band theory. So, there is a hole here and this electron gets excited across when this energy gap is small. So, this hole goes across this energy gap into an empty state in the conduction band. The electron moves in the conduction band and the hole moves in the valence band. So, in a semiconductor conduction by electrons and holes in a semiconductor. So, these are some of the important features which arise as a consequence of the periodic potential. We next consider the concept of holes in semiconductors for this let us consider a valence band a valence band is here and this is the conduction band let us consider a state here in the valence band which is completely filled, it is full, but let us consider one state here as being one from which an electron which occupies this gets excited thermally into the conduction band leaving a vacancy here, an unoccupied state. Now, this unoccupied state in an otherwise completely filled valence band this is called a hole now we should not regard the hole as simply an empty state if this is so in the conduction band there are a lot of empty states that doesn't mean that there are a lot of holes in the conduction band a hole is defined only in a filled valence band in which some of the states are not occupied. To give a, an analogy, is an air bubble in a tank of water. Suppose, if this tank is filled with water and there is a small space which is not occupied by water, then the air will fill there and you will have an air bubble. But that does not mean that a container which is completely empty cannot be said to be filled with air bubbles, it is filled with air. Okay. So, consider a single hole let us consider a single hole in the valence band of the semiconductor. Now, if this hole is to respond to an electric field, but how will it respond? Response to an external electric field. Now, if this field is 0 in 0 field, we know that there is no current.
In other words, the current density which is E sigma V i that is the j this is 0 for all the i's. Now, let us write this these i is over all the states which are there. Now, we can write this summation E sigma i V i as E let us put a negative sign because this is we are considering the current due to the electrons. So, that can be written as E V plus sigma E V j over j. where j not equal to i and we can write or let us say i i not equal to j that is we are taking a state j out of these totality of states i and that is kept outside the summation and then all the rest of them where the i does not include j, they are connected considered in the sum. Now, this is this total is 0. In other words, we can write E v j that is minus E or sigma E V i i not equal to j. So, this can be written as the whole current this is the same as the current due to all the electrons in which the unoccupied state is not considered and the total current density is considered. So, this is the whole current. Now, if we have an external field then the way the current density changes with time depends on the time derivative of this. So, this is j prime the current density let me write it as a capital. The way the whole current changes when there is when the field is on that can be written from here as E d v j by d t and that is E times minus E E by E m star, where E is the electric field. I put a negative sign because it is a hole which has a charge which is opposite to that of the negative sign because of charge of hole is opposite to that of electron. Now, if we want an increase in the whole current as a result of the field being switched on then that means, m star should be negative. for whole current to increase in the presence of E.
and if we consider the effective mass m star should be negative. Where is an m star negative here? Have we come across such a situation? We can see that in figure 35 2 we have plotted the effective mass versus k and we find that m star is negative in the upper half of the valence band. The holes reside in the upper portion of the energy band, the valence band. So, holes are thus defined as vacant states in the upper portion of the valence band where the effective mass is negative. So, they have a positive charge, positive charge and negative mass. They have a charge opposite in sign to that of the electron and negative effective mass. These are the two characteristics of holes. Next, we wish to talk about, we have been considering energy band structure in one dimension. Suppose energy bands in a three, di in a three dimensional solid. This is because if we have the shape of the E versus K curve, depends on the direction of K. So, in a three dimensional solid, suppose we have an electron traveling in 1 0 0 direction. So, it will not have in this direction electron traveling in 1 0 0 direction will not have the same E versus K curve as an electron traveling along one 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 say. That is because the lattice constants, the lattice repeat distances are different and the Brillouin zone extends from minus pi by A to plus pi by A, where A is the repeat distance. Since the repeat distance changes depending on whether it is 1 0 0 or 1 1 1. Correspondingly, the E versus K curve will also be different. So, the limits of the Brillouin zone are different for electrons moving in different directions. So, the maxima and minima in the E versus K curve. may not coincide, they may or may not lie at the same k value.
in different directions. So, what is the consequence of this? The consequence of this is shown in figure where the energy versus k curve is shown for the valence band edge and the conduction band. Suppose so I have the this is the conduction band, this is the valence band. Here the maximum in the valence band lies at the same k value as the minimum in the conduction band. So, this is known as a direct band gap semiconductor. It is found that gallium arsenide has such a band structure. On the other hand, if you consider materials like silicon, they do not have such a band structure. Silicon for example, or germanium are indirect band gap semiconductors. What does it mean? This means that the E versus K curve will be such that there is a maximum in the valence band, this is the valence band and the minimum in the conduction band is situated somewhere else. So, we have this and this, this is the band gap. In the indirect band gap, the maximum of the valence band and the minimum of the conduction band do not occur at the same k value. So, the minimum of the conduction band will be in a different k value and we will have to consider this energy difference between these two extrema which gives you a band gap of something like 1.2 eV for silicon because there is a change in the k value corresponding to which there is a change in the momentum and therefore, the kinetic energy. So, that has to be added. So, there is also not only a change in energy, a transition from the valence band into the conduction band involves a change in energy equal to the energy gap, this gap plus a change in momentum corresponding to a change in wave vector from here to here. So, such semiconductors are known as indirect band gap semiconductors. Direct band gap semiconductors are of special interest. Now, having considered holes, we can briefly revert back to what we discuss in connection with the high temperature superconductors. You may recall that we have a high temperature superconductor such as Y B A 2 C U 3 O 6.9. That is a high temperature superconductor which we call the whole superconductor. We can now understand why this is called like this considering the valency of this. 
yttrium is 3 plus, barium is 2 plus, copper is also 2 plus and oxygen is 2 minus. So, if you consider the charge balance, we have 3 plus 4, 2 into 2 plus 3 into 2 which is 6 which is 13 that is plus and O if I have O 7 for example, suppose I have 7 then O 7 will give me 14 minus. So, for charge balance you require exactly if it is O 6 for example, this is 12 whereas, what we have in the positive ion case is 13 plus. So, the charge balance requires that this should be more than 6.5 actually this becomes if you reduce it by a small amount delta from the stoichiometry of 7 we get the behavior of high temperature superconductivity and this is because this charge balance is affected leaving a few holes in the conduction band and that is the reason for superconductivity. So, that is why we call this a hole superconductor whereas, the neodymium was called an electron like superconductor again for the same reason. So, this is the reason for the nomenclature and it is the whole conduction it is the pairing of poles which is responsible for superconductivity in the high temperature superconductor IPCO. We now pass on to a discussion of semiconductors.